Well, what do employers need to do for 2022? More than 80% of global chief executives across 44 industries believe economic growth will remain strong in the new year. However, it won't be without a high level of uncertainty and volatility. Now, according to a new survey by YPO, the global leadership community of chief executives. So my special guest for this Mark Bishop show is Dr. Christine Crawford. She's Chair of Diversity and Inclusion Network at YPO. Welcome, Christine. Thank you, Mark. Well, the YPO Global Pulse Report focuses on gathering insights on topics that influence businesses and drive leadership decisions. So what was the outcome, Christine, when conducted from November through the first week of December? So 34% of our respondents had a very favorable outlook um, for the coming year, and nearly half were somewhat favorable. So in general, most of our leaders are optimistic uh, about their business outlook. Um, however, 71% are concerned about inflation and really wrestling with how to deal with um, that inflation and whether or not to pass it on to their customers, work on it with efficiencies, or can automation help um, address inflation. And then other challenges include supply chain disruptions, I think, which are things that we're all well aware of, talent, and then operating restrictions. Hmm. Well, um, looking at a couple of numbers I have in front of me, uh, only 17% said they saw a decrease of 10% or more since the beginning of the year. So, you know, you would think that's not too bad. As hiring is picking up, 38% of respondents have experienced a 10% increase or more. I mean, what we're hearing, though, is that there's millions of jobs and no one to take them, right? Right. So it's really about um, trying to find the, the right folks for your company. And there are certain industries that are struggling more with finding workers. And so um, in our survey, healthcare. Um, 83% of those in healthcare were having trouble finding workers. Construction, 78%, and then product services, 76%. So I think, um, obviously, in healthcare, I think the toll of COVID and um, on healthcare workers has been tremendous, and there's been a lot of discussion around those who have maybe left healthcare, immediate healthcare settings to go into other sectors. So I think it's really about kind of this... Um, shift in industries and there were industries that basically came to a halt at one point during the pandemic. A lot of those folks have gone on to find work in other fields and so there's some shift shifting and realignment that is happening now and I think you know a lot of it is really from a higher perspective figuring out what your workplace looks like post-COVID. Mm-hmm. Well you know uh, according to the stats hiring and business revenue picked up you know, during this year. Uh, But despite clear concerns of overproductivity, many are moving forward, aren't they, with flexible and remote uh, work schedules. I mean, how do business leaders feel about work schedules in general? What are they sharing with you? And what about mental health benefits? Well, so it's interesting that um, most of the respondents uh, don't feel that employees are as productive at home, but 74% of them are going to have some type of flexible work schedule, right? And so 32% are going to have a permanent flexible work schedule. And so it's really about um, figuring out what works best for our team members um, and our workplaces. And then we've all, I think, during covid you know, come to appreciate how important Mm -hmm. maintaining and protecting um, our mental health is. And so want to make sure that we offer that benefit and and look to support our employees and their mental health as well. So 35% of our leaders are investing in mental health. And then of the 16% who don't, they're planning to add some component um, to help support and protect their, their employees' mental health. I'm speaking with Dr. Christine Crawford. She's the uh, Chair of Diversity and Inclusion Network at YPO. You know, right into what's going on with executives, which is the pulse of our nation. So when you think about that, now, even though only 1% 
of executive survey believe that employees are more productive at home than in the office. I mean, what would you attribute that to, do you think, Christine? You know, I think it's really for us as leaders, when your workers are remote, I think it's just hard to get a pulse and a feel for what's going on. And I think that when you supervise um, large numbers of people. So much of that is, you know, you need kind of what you see or what you feel when you walk into a workplace to help you gauge that. And adjusting to trying to do that remotely is really, really hard. So I think that that assessment of your workplace and your culture, and I think the things that as um, CEOs we're charged with, right, which is really setting and nurturing a culture, figuring out how to do that when you go to 100% remote, when you're used to seeing folks, it's really a challenge. And so, and it's not just for how do we deal with it temporarily, but it's how do we think about this long term? And I think that's a really um, big challenge for, for leaders. And how do I make sure that the things that I think are important to how we do our business are conveyed to new employees as we on board? How do I make sure that the folks who've been with me forever continue to know that this is important to us? And just how do I do that over a screen? Mm. Yeah, more communication is uh, is going to be definitely yeah. needed. I mean, you mentioned before that, you know, something like 74% of business leaders shared that there'll be some form of flexible work arrangements but becoming more permanent. We're going to have empty offices everywhere. But I guess it's going to depend a lot too on uh, the positions, on the uh, style of uh, company, what they deal in. You know, I guess it's better for some to be working at home than others, isn't it? It is. And I think, though, it's also about not everyone wants to work from home, right? There are some who like coming into an office, who like that complete separation. Um, There are others who don't want to ever sit in traffic again and and like working from home. And so figuring out what that balance is and how we work, I think it's going to be different, Um, but I think it's going to evolve. And I think, um, again, if we've learned nothing else, it's how to think outside the box and be flexible because of COVID. And I think that flexibility is key, right? Like not knowing what it's going to look like and not knowing what will be permanent and where the right place will be. Mm. Um, It's something that, you know, we're all on a journey together. Well, well, Dr. Crawford, how can networking and joining supportive communities benefit, you know, employers and employees for that matter? So it's really about seeking those same um, champions and cheerleaders that we hope and and are grateful for in our personal life. So that the folks that love you that say, okay, you've done a great job on this, but also love you enough to say, okay, maybe you should do this differently. Maybe you shouldn't say that thing, or maybe you should think about this before you make that decision. And so we need that in our professional lives as well. Right. And so it's, Communities like YPO provide that. And so how do I get um, folks who will support and challenge me professionally? Um, And that's a great thing for my employees as well, right? Like we only make each other better when we help each other see blind spots, but also encourage and support one another. Mm. No, very true. Now, uh, both employees and employers, would benefit by going to your site and reading. There's a lot there. Uh, We're talking about www.ypo.org, correct? Yes. So we would love for you all to come to ypo.org and learn about our community of business leaders, to learn what um, we're thinking about, um, what concerns us, and just how we're striving to be better so that we can be better leaders for our communities and our businesses. And I'm pretty sure they could read on the site about, uh, you know, innovative benefits that support employees as well. It's all there, isn't it? It is. And I think that the, the innovation, though, and the re- so the results of the survey live at YPO.org, but the innovation is really going to vary, right? And so hmm. what is going to work in a manufacturing setting is not necessarily going to be the same thing that works in a service 
setting, right? And so service-based business or hospitality. And so figuring out what those innovations are for your particular business, that's going to be a little different. But the idea of listening and becoming better leaders so that you can figure out what that innovation looks like in your culture, in your um, particular business environment, that's the thing that I think drives us all. Doctor, amazing. Thank you so much for giving us your time today. We appreciate that, folks. That was Dr. Christine Crawford, Chair of Diversity and Inclusion Network at YPO. You heard her here on The Mark Bishop Show.